Salvatore Sally Pro Profaci, also known as Jersey Sal, was born in 1936 in Brooklyn. He would later relocate out to Holmdel, New Jersey. Jersey Sal was the eldest son of family boss Joe Profaci. He had several brothers and cousins, one also named Salvatore, that would become active on some level within the Borgata or with family businesses. Sal was also related by marriage to the sons of the former bosses of the Detroit family. One sister married the son of Joseph Zerilli, and his other sister married the son of Black Bill Toko. His activities included shylocking, gambling, extortion, business infiltration, labor rackets, and food supply rackets. Sally Pro was known as a smart and savvy mafioso cut from his father's cloth. Old Man Joe had groomed him very well in the customs and rules of the life because he was often talked about with respect and awe in that he was an excellent negotiator and knew his way around the sit-down table. An important point to remember is that Jersey Sal inherited not only his father's name, tutelage, and business acumen, but also an estate inheritance said to have been upwards of $50 million, so Sal was a powerhouse in more ways than one. Profaci became based in New Jersey because of his father's early purchase of a 300-acre estate in the Heightstown section where the family would often go, so he became very familiar with New Jersey early on. By 1977, he would be tapped as the family's residing Capo di Decina for the state where he controlled, under his tutelage, all members and key associates that chose to reside there, an inducted crew of maybe seven to nine men at its maximum. Before I continue, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Sal Profaci's main strength came from his interest in Roma Foods Inc., a huge multi-million dollar wholesale Italian foods and paper products firm that supplied over 800 pizzerias and Italian style restaurants with mozzarella cheese, canned tomatoes, olive oils, pizza boxes, and a whole smorgasbord of products focused on the pizza industry. This company had its genesis in his father's original Brooklyn-based companies Mamma Mia Imports and the Mamma Mia Packing Company, which started way back at the end of the Prohibition era. As a side note, Sal's brother John, a legitimate businessman, later founded the Cola Vita Olive Oil Company, the popular nationwide olive oil brand commonly found on our supermarket shelves. Jersey Sal would also later expand into other related industries, becoming a consultant, using his lofty mob status to infiltrate and control varied companies and industries. This included a marketing company he owned named Eastern States Marketing in Matawan, in which he operated as a consultant. Although Profaci was educated and was ostensibly a legitimate businessman, he ran his mob crew according to traditional and accepted Cosa Nostra standards. He allowed his men to practice all the traditional rackets including gambling, shylocking, extortion, and strong-arm work and received his fair share as their capo. But personally, he always concentrated on immersing himself in a cloak of legitimacy, maintaining an image as a philanthropist and misunderstood businessman who just happened to have a notorious father. But the FBI would not accept that. Seen in the company of succeeding family bosses over the years, they kept Sally Pro from Jersey on their radar. During a separate investigation of New Jersey-based lawyer Salvatore Avina, Sally Pro was caught in an FBI bug planted in Avina's office. It spoke volumes about Sal's mentality and knowledge of Mafia protocol. In a conversation between the two Sal's over Avina having brought a lawsuit against a Genovese family garbage racketeer who Avina claimed had been stealing from him, Profaci schooled him in the ways of the mob, saying, good fellows don't sue good fellows, good fellows kill good fellows. Actually, the conversation recorded in June of 1992 went like this. Did I do something wrong? Avina asked Profaci. Well, you started a lawsuit. Good fellows don't sue good fellows, Profaci replied. Good fellows don't sue good fellows, Avina retorted. So the thief could do as he please and that's it? To which Profaci responded, good fellows kill good fellows. I guess that's the way it is. He then instructed Avina to immediately drop the lawsuit before Avina himself got clipped. Avina complied and eventually settled the matter out of court. Nonetheless, Profaci's good fellow statement became something of a mob mantra and was often repeated in newspapers and books on the underworld. But Profaci was also caught on tape saying this, another indication of Sal's mentality and knowledge of Mafia protocol. You know, to me, Cosa Nostra is very sacred, okay? And my word is better than anything else that I got to offer. As a side note, Avina was a son of the former Mafia boss of Philadelphia and himself an alleged mobbed-up associate who represented many infamous mobsters including Angelo Bruno, Giuseppe Gambino of the Cherry Hill Gambinos, and John Stampa. 
Avina was also Sal Perfacci's son-in-law. Back in 1972, Sal was one of eight Colombo members indicted by the Brooklyn Strike Force for bank fraud. It was alleged that they had lied on loan applications and had bribed a compliant bank loan officer, but no disposition on the case could be found. In the late 1980s, Sal Perfacci would be indicted for a conspiracy to extort and mail fraud in another racket scheme to dominate the paper cardboard industry in the state. He was using coercion tactics to force the AMP supermarket chain and other big box stores to relinquish their paper waste to him for pennies. Colombo soldier Gus Spadafora was also indicted and convicted with Perfacci in this case, as well as an AMP executive named James Gao. Perfacci would serve a four-year federal prison sentence after conviction. While he was away, he elevated a veteran soldier named Salvatore Tutti Lombardino up to acting capo status to watch over the crew. This would prove to be a mistake in that Lombardino and two other soldiers, brothers Ray and Rocco Cagno, would get indicted for the murder of James Randazzo. Randazzo, who was also a Colombo soldier, was suspected of being an informant. Rocco Cagno ended up becoming an informant himself and testified at the murder trials of both Lombardino and his brother Ray. Both were convicted and ended up serving long prison terms. At some point soon after, Profaci wisely stepped back from active participation in the rackets. By the time he was in his early 70s, he chose to retire. Salvatore Jersey Sal Profaci died in 2018 at the comfortable age of 81, surrounded by his large, loving blood family and friends. With his passing ended an era never to be seen again. As a son of an original founding member of the American Cosa Nostra, he carried the flag of that life with honor and reverence, and was a reminder to all of what had once been an intricate way of life for many. You can read many more stories about the Mafia at Button Guys of the New York Mafia at www.thenewyorkmafia.com. And please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave us a comment. Thank you for watching. Until next time.